In this next video, we're going to be taking a look a little bit more at working with layers inside of Photoshop CS6. So let's go to our mini bridge. If you open it up, you'll notice that I'm working with a file here called KillerSitesU4.psd, and it can be found in your source files in the folder called Killer Sites. So if you can get that open, double click it so that it'll open up inside of Photoshop. Here, I've fit it into my screen by pressing Command-0 or Control-0 on a PC. And you'll notice that its visibility is only set to about 35%. If you press Command-1 and put it at 100%, you'll be able to see that it's a lot larger than we saw in just a second ago. And basically, it's just a simple web interface. And we're going to be working with this interface and creating one very similar to what we see here. So again, I'm going to press Command-0 just to get it into the size of the screen. And what we want to be doing is working with layers and taking a look at an overview of layers and how they work. You can expand your panels right here. And if you have things like swatches that are open, you can just double click them to collapse them. At this point, I only have my layers open. And you'll notice, even if you didn't expand your panels, you can always go to this icon. Just clicking on it will open up your layers right here. Well, one of the first things that you can see is that the vast majority of my objects in this particular document are now stored inside of what we call layer groups. Here you can see in the layout, there are a number of backgrounds. And then there's a section here called Banner, among other things. You can also see that these particular layer groups have eyeballs right next to them right here. Well, these icons are controlling the visibility of these layers. And let's take a look at this. If I were to open up this layer group called Sticker, and when you expand them, you can see that inside each of those layer groups, there are individual layers, some of which are type layers, some of which are pixel layers, some of which are even adjustment layers. All of these things we'll talk about in future videos. Notice here, some that have effects can have their effects be expanded or collapsed to make things a little bit more easier to work with. And when you collapse this, you can see that if I focus in on this sticker area right here. I'm going to press Alt and I'm going to use my mouse scroller just to zoom in a little bit more on that area. Well, take a look. If we were to click on this little eyeball, we are hiding the visibility of that particular group and all of its contents, all of the layers inside. Now, one of the things that we might remember is that this does not delete the items that are in here. It simply hides their visibility. You can also see that some of these groupings happen to have colors associated with them. And this is easily achieved inside of a layer palette or a group simply by right-clicking on a group or an individual layer and then coming down here and adding a color to them. So as you can see, I've made this grouping be red. And if you open it up, you can now see that all of the elements that were inside that group are now color-coded as red layers as well. This makes things much easier to work with, especially when you're dealing with a very diverse and varied composition like the one that we happen to have right here. It's not unusual for your layouts and any type of composition for that matter inside of Photoshop to contain well over hundreds of layers. And if you had all of these layers just opened up the way they are, like this, that would be a lot more difficult to find the things that you're looking for. So what we have to remember is that layer groups and layers are really all about keeping things organized. And you'll notice also that when you're working with layers, You've got to remember that the way layers work are simply by allowing elements to be stacked one on top of each other. So let's take a look. If I were to Command minus or Control minus, just reduce this canvas a little bit, 
and then you can press spacebar to kind of move it into view. Check out what happens if we start hiding the visibility. The sticker is turned off, the footer, well, footer's down at the bottom, so there you go, it's turned off now. These subpages do not have anything on them at the moment, but here we have the quotes section, the features section, the logo section, the navigation, these sections, and then ultimately that banner. So that is how these things work. When you turn one on, and then another one on top of it, you're essentially just layering elements, one on top of another, on top of another, on top of another, until ultimately you have your entire composition laid out. Now, there are many different things that we're going to be talking about and learning about when we discuss our layers, and in the next video we'll be creating some layers and walking our way through the building of this composition as you see it right here. But take a look. There's some elements here, like the layout group that we happen to have, that has an icon that indicates it's locked. And that means if I were to take my black arrow tool, the selection tool, and attempt to select this particular element, you'll notice that, yes, this frog layer is being selected, but I can't select the layout even if I wanted to, simply because it's locked. So in order to select the white area or the black area that I have here, I would have to unlock this first. So to lock and unlock a layer, as you can see here, you select the either layer group or the individual layer itself. And then all you got to do is to come up here and either lock or unlock that particular layer. It's a useful thing to keep in mind because there are going to be times when we want to select elements on this page, but we really don't want to be moving around, in this case, the background or the layout. Something that's new inside of Photoshop 6 is the searchable layer elements here. And as you can see, it says pick a filter type. Well, without actually picking a filter type, let's just look at some of these icons. For example, here we have one that says filter for pixel layers. So if I were to click on this, you would see that only the pixel layers are showing. Everything else is taken away. If I turn that off, I could say, show me only the adjustment layers. And now only adjustment layers are showing. Or if I turn that off, I could say, let's see just the type layers. Now look at that. All of these are indicating and showing only type layers. Or perhaps only shape layers. And there are all my shape layers that I've got in this object. The last one that we happen to see here is smart objects, but I don't have any smart objects in this particular file, so I'm not turning that on. Under kind, however, you could also search by name. So for example, I know there's a file, or a layer rather, in here called frog, so all I have to do is to write in frog, and notice I've filtered through all of the different layers that we had here, and now I've managed to find the frog really quickly and easily. Let's also look at this. You could filter through effects, so only the elements that have effects, or only the elements that happen to have certain modes associated with them, or those that have attributes. As well, you could see those that have color or in this case, not colored. And then I could come in here and say, well, show me only the reds, or show me only the oranges. So these are all really easy ways of finding elements inside your layers and being able to work with them. Let's also take a look at something else. If you were to grab a group of elements, remember how I said layers are all about stacking things one on top of each other. But if I was to grab a group like this one, and to bring it, for example, underneath the banner area, you could see that now my sticker has been moved at the bottom underneath the banner. If I wanted to bring it all the way back up to the top, I could do so as well. Be careful, because sometimes when you're trying to put something underneath something else, or in this case on top of it, you don't want to be putting it or nesting it inside of this particular group. So just make sure that it's going all the way up to the top. 
and you can see little highlights to help you along in that fashion. So those are some of the basics. When we come back in the next video, we're going to be building up a couple of layers, and we'll start stacking them and naming them, and we'll be placing things in groups.